Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Ask the Pediatricians Live. My name is Tomila Lato Sineribake. Welcome to today's edition. We'll be talking about um, today's World Oral Health Day. Let me start with that, today's World Oral Health Day. And we'll be having Dr. Bukola Olatosi with us today. And I don't know. It's it's going to be it's going to be a great 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 time learning learning about tips on how to keep the mouth healthy. Remember, this is Axa Pediatrician, so we're talking strictly about children zero to eighteen. So come learn, come learn, come learn. Share with your family and friends. Bring all your questions about the mouth, the teeth, everything oral, everything dental. Our pediatric, our consultant pediatric dentist, Dr. Buki Olatosi, would take all our questions. So I'm gonna give us some um, some few few minutes to just share with our friends and families. And um, of course, drop your questions. We won't be attending to questions immediately, but you can drop your questions if you're watching us on Facebook, if you're watching us on YouTube, just drop your questions. Once it's time for questions and answers, we'll begin to share your questions. But please, please, please call your family and friends. Let's all learn together. The theme for this year's World Oral Health Day is be proud of your mouth, as in be very, very proud to open your mouth anywhere you go. So let's, let's, Let's give our children, let's give our babies, let's help them have good oral, oral hygiene. Let's, uh, let's cultivate good habits for them. Um, a warm welcome to everybody that is watching. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, okay, just one more minute and I'll bring in Dr. Buki Olatosi to start off. Um, my moderators, I hope you are on standby to help me copy questions from the watch party. Um, but please, please, as much as possible, our, our audience, please, as much as possible, drop your questions on the main video. The main video is on the Ask the Pediatricians Foundation page, not where you are watching the watch party, no. Not where the video has been shared to, no. Make sure you click on the video itself to be able to drop your questions. But even if you can't drop your questions there, never mind. I have backup supports that will help me bring the questions over here. Uh, without uh, much ado, let me bring in Dr. Buki Olatosi. Dr. Buki, you're welcome, man. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Yeah. Today is World Oral Health Day, and I am super excited to be here on Ask the Pediatrician Live to tell us about the oral health of our children. So the theme for this year's uh, World Oral Health Day is be proud of your mouth. Are you proud of your mouth? Are you proud of your child's mouth? If you are not, you still have the chance and the opportunity to be proud of your mouth. Everyone deserves to be proud of their mouth and that especially that of our children. So I will be taking questions on the oral health, Any. Uh, question you have with regards to the oral health of your child. So uh, I will start first by saying that the oral health, having good oral, your child uh, having good oral health starts actually from the time you are pregnant as a mother. When you are pregnant, you are expected to visit a dental clinic, to visit your dentist, to check your, your mouth, to check your teeth. And uh, a lot of people believe that when you're pregnant, you cannot go to the dentist. You should actually to have your mouth examined. 
the reason why is because sometimes we have we have bacteria in our mouth bacteria that cause tooth decay and this bacteria can be transmitted to our children once they are born by saliva sharing activities so when you are pregnant you have tooth decay don't run away from the dentist get it treated to reduce the bacterial load the bacteria causing tooth decay so that when you, your baby is born, it reduces the load and the transmission to that of your newborn. Also, when you are pregnant, you have to brush twice daily. I know that some people have difficulty brushing because of nausea and vomiting. So what you need to do most times is in the morning, pregnant women, you have your nausea, your vomiting in the morning. So you don't have to strictly brush when you are having those uh, nausea, uh, feeling. What you can do is you can actually brush in the evening. In the morning when you wake up, you can rinse your mouth with mouthwash. Any good mouthwash, you use the mouthwash, rinse out, and then you can go about your activities till when the nausea and vomiting goes down, then you can brush. And when you vomit, you can actually, I'm sure a lot of people are hearing this for the first time, baking soda because when you throw up, it, it, a lot of acid comes into the mouth. And those acids, they kind of break down the uh, tooth structure and makes it soft. So to, to neutralize that, you can put a baking soda in a cup of water and rinse with your mouth. Please do not swallow it. This is just to neutralize the effect of the acid in the mouth. Also, when you are pregnant, you have lots of cravings. A lot of pregnant women, that's when they want to eat all sorts of things. And some of these things can cause tooth decay for the, for the pregnant mother. So you have to be conscious that uh, you do not take any sugar containing uh, uh, food, as in refined sugars, things that are too sweetened that may cause tooth decay for you. And uh, you have to eat lots of nutritious uh, food, especially those that contain calcium, because you know that calcium helps with the development of uh, bone, heart tissue. When your, your baby is forming, the teeth are also forming. So what you eat, you are what you eat, actually. And what you eat, you are also feeding to your child. So it's important that you, you, know, you take care of what you eat. And lots of fruits and vegetables as well. So still a lot about, uh, we are still talking about when you're pregnant, uh, avoid uh, self-medication when you're pregnant because some of the medications that uh, pregnant women take are contraindicated to, for the development of the, uh, of the child's uh, teeth and mouth. Example of the medication done that you should avoid during pregnancy is tetracycline. When you take tetracycline, it, uh, it affects the developing teeth. And when the child is born, and starts to bring out uh, his or her teeth, you see that some of those teeth become colored. Yeah, some, some are black, some are yellow, and all that. We want to avoid that, so do not self-prescribe. If you have any issue, any problem during pregnancy, please visit your, your physician so that they can give you the appropriate medication. Do not be afraid to come to the dental clinic. I've said that before. Some are worried about the x-ray. It has been said that the amount of x-ray that you know that you get, when, especially for the dental, is so minimal that it is safe for you when you come to the dental clinic when you are pregnant. So please do not run away. If you have any issue when you are pregnant, please come to the dental clinic and get treated. Now, having said that, we can now go to our uh, when the child is born. Immediately the child is born, parents are happy, we are all joyous, and so many things can happen around that, that time. I've seen children being born with uh, teeth, we call it natal, neonatal teeth in uh, dentistry. It's nothing to be afraid of. Don't go to the quack to say you want to get it removed or uh, bring that child to the, to the dental clinic. Sometimes the tooth a lot of people have beliefs about the child being born with a tooth. It's just, it may be that, you know, it's part of the normal complement that is the tooth that will come out in six months. So don't think that the child is evil or the child is uh, bad luck. No, no, no. It's just that the development, there's an ab abnormality in the development of the tooth tissue when the child uh, was, was, was uh, in, the, in the womb growing. 
So such cases, if it is mobile, if it, the tooth is disturbing breastfeeding, what we do is that we take it out. But if not, if the tooth is firm, it's okay. You just leave your child. There's nothing wrong with that child. You can come to the dental clinic if you, if you see such, and we will cancel you and give you the appropriate treatment for that. So around the period of birth, there's so many things you can observe in the mouth of your child. And apart from the natal, neonatal, you can see some things that look like um, gum boils before the tooth starts to erupt. If you notice any such thing, please don't uh, bust it. Don't use any sharp object to say you want to treat. Just bring your child to the dentist, the pediatric dentist, and we will cancel you and give you the appropriate treatment. So a few days after your child is born, it's not when the child is grown, all the teeth are there, that's when you start to clean your child's mouth. No. A few days after is when you should start oral hygiene practice for your child so that that child develops and is ready always to clean. Because sometimes when we don't inculcate that habit into, the, into our children, when they are now grown, we say, they open your mouth, brush your teeth, and they are running up and down. They don't want to stay. But that habit should have been developed as soon as the baby is born. So how soon should you start cleaning your child's mouth? Not teeth now, mouth. Immediately or two to three days after the child is born. And what do you need to clean? You don't need glycerin. Like many people will say, bonjela, all sorts of things that have been, you know, shared uh, around. All you need is a piece of cloth, clean cloth. This I got, some people sell this. It's like uh, you can wear it like a glove on the finger. I'm wearing it now on my finger. Mm? It's clean. You can just use it, put, uh, dab it, uh, put it in water and use it to swipe the mouth, the tongue, the, uh, the lip, every part of your child's uh, mouth, and that should be okay. Anything that this clean, this, if you don't have this, you can always use a white handkerchief or a, a clean uh, towel that is dedicated for the child. So you do it after breastfeeding, you do it like two to three times in a day to clean your child's mouth with water. You put it, you dab it in water and then you, you use it to clean your child's uh, mouth. Oof. Then you have to bring to the dentist. It may be that there's a uh, thrush or candida or something else. Please do not use blade. We have seen parents that will use, try to use blade to try to scrape off uh, some things that they see on their children's tongue. Please do not do that. Use the water, use the clean handkerchief like I've demonstrated, shown you to clean your child's mouth and that should be enough. You don't need glycerin. Glycerin is harsh. You don't want to use that. Water and clean cloth is fine two to three days after your child is born. If we follow this, um, I'm telling you, you will be proud of your child's mouth. So once we have done this, once the child has the first tooth in the mouth, that is when you should start brushing. A lot of mothers believe that, oh, it's the baby tooth. Why are we disturbing the child? Is it not just one tooth or three or four teeth? <laughs> when the, the, the primary dentition is complete, that is the 20 teeth expected oh. in a child's mouth is complete at that time, then we will start brushing. By that time, you, uh, you've seen children that are like two years, three years, having really bad oral hygiene, tooth decay. You know, you'd want to avoid that. So what you will do is to start brushing for the child as soon as the first tooth comes out. Look at this brush. It is ma made for a baby, in fact, less than a year. You can see the design. So all you need to do is get simple brush. I have another one here. This one you can put on the finger, on finger and use it. Yes, you can use this. And what do you need? You must use toothpaste. A lot of people just believe that, oh, you just brought... No, the toothpaste is important because it has fluoride in it and fluoride helps to fight against the uh, tooth decay. So the good news is that we have toothpaste that are well formulated for children. Don't use adult toothpaste. I don't want to mention the name of any toothpaste now here. 
we will we later maybe if we have sponsors to sponsor us and ask the pediatricians then we can mention the name of the toothpaste but what you need to do is go to the clean uh, to the to the store get toothpaste that's formulated for children and make sure that it contains fluoride so once you have that toothpaste how uh, uh, what is the amount of toothpaste that you need do you need to put it throughout the length of the bristle just like and make it curve like it is advertised uh, on the tv no what you need for a child that has just erupted the first tooth or children between zero to three years is the size of a grain of rice we all know the grain of rice how small it is, how small it is. that is all you need to put on the brush any one you choose to use and then you use it to clean your child's uh, tooth you clean don't forget to clean the tongue as well and uh, also massage the gums that is what you need you don't need so much don't use adult toothpaste because the amount of fluoride that we have in the adult toothpaste is much more and if a child swallows it it can cause some side effects that we do not want in our, in our children. So okay. that is when the first tooth erupts. And as soon as uh, the, between three to six years, you also use an adequate toothbrush. We have all sorts. You can see that this toothbrush now is bigger than the first one I showed you. So, so you have to use. Dr. Buki? Dr. Buki? Children between the ages of three to six years, what you need is the size of a, uh, a pea size. Do we know what pea is? Uh, the pea, the vegetables that we eat, that pea that you use in cooking your fried rice. Peas, as we call it. it just that size is what you should put on the toothbrush to brush for your, for your child. So, as soon as the first tooth erupts is when you should start brushing with toothbrush, age appropriate uh, toothbrush and the, um, the right size and amount of toothpaste. When should uh, you visit the, bring your child to the dentist for the first time? I have seen a lot of adults walking on the road that have never visited the dentist before. <laughs> and some people, when I ask them, when is the right time to, to, to bring your child to the dentist, they will say maybe between five years and six years. So today, I'm telling you, we are learning that you should bring your child to visit the dentist before the fun or before the child's first birthday. There are so many advantages of doing this. When you come, you get to learn a lot of things things that you should avoid, you'll be educated on this amount of toothpaste, how to take care of the oral hygiene of your child, what to do, some things that you may not be able to pick as a lay person. You may be able to see it and advise you and encourage you and such that you will be proud of your child's mouth. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing I want to talk about is tooth decay. Tooth decay course, there are so many things that cause it. We've, we've talked about bacteria. We've talked about, because in the mouth, we have bacteria. We have plaque in the mouth. And uh, if the bacteria is not removed, then if it, stays, it starts to feed on the tooth tissue and breaks it down, causing tooth decay. So okay. we have bacteria, the, the food, the type of food that we, we take in or give to our children can also cause to decay. And the frequency of taking in this uh, sweetened uh, foods like sugar, chewing gum, chocolate, the frequency at which it is taken can also cause to decay. And also the structure of the tooth can also uh, cause uh, to decay. So when you have your baby, please, as mothers, avoid saliva sharing activities as much as possible. What do I mean by that? You have your baby, then you start to kiss your baby. If you already have bacteria in your mouth, you have to decay. You know when children are born, they don't have this, uh, we call it strep mutants in their mouth. It is being transferred to the children most times by the caregivers mm. that already have it in their mouth. So when you're kissing your child or you take a spoon, you put it in your mouth to taste the child's food, 
first and then you now put it in the child's mouth. That way you are sharing saliva between yourself and your newborn. And that child that doesn't have that bacteria, you are transferring it into the, the, the mouth of your baby. So if you have been doing this, you can, you can all kiss your child on the cheek. You don't have to do mouth to mouth. You can put the food on your hand, taste it. You don't have to put the spoon in your mouth and also give it to your child. So you have to avoid that as much as possible. And uh, before we go to, to continue with tooth decay, there's also teething. We've said that we look, in fact, there's so much we can talk about here. The time would not be enough. We've said a lot about teething. See, when your child yeah, is around the time of bringing out or growing in the first tooth or other teeth, uh, baby teeth, we call, we call that teething. The children can have what we call increase in temperature, but not fever. Teething is not fever. So if your child is having fever, please take that, that child to the, clean, to, the, to, the, to the clinic. Don't say it, it, is, it is teething. The child is teething. No, teething is not fever. Teething is not diarrhea. If your child, the child may have loose stool, but not diarrhea, not vomiting. If the child is vomiting, if the child is having diarrhea, if the child is having high fever or rash, please take the, uh, your child to the clinic. If a child is teething normally, teething is a normal physiologic process. Most ch ch children go through it. They may be irritable, crying most of the time. Truly love saliva, yes. And because the, the teeth wants, they want to grow in, they have irritation around the gums, they want to chew on things, eat things, bite here and there. What you can, teething ring or teether, we call it, I have one here, not sure if it's showing, Dr. Uh, Tommy, can you see it? Is it clear or do I? No, no, it's not clear. It? No, ma. We can't see it. Okay. All right. So this is the uh, TV ring. And um, Doctor, can you hear me? Bring it out of the pack so that we can we can all see it properly. So what you can do once your child is crying and irritable, this is it. You can put uh -huh. it in the fridge. It becomes cool, oh. and then you can give it to your child. You can chew on it. Please don't give teething biscuits. Those biscuits can even cause tooth decay. We don't recommend any form of because it stays in the mouth for so long no. and uh, causing tooth decay. We don't want that. This is just good. And if there's increase in temperature, you can give paracetamol. And we expect you really know. Please, for the teething ring, please make sure that it is well cleaned because at that way, if the child is throwing it around and keeps putting it in the mouth, that can even cause uh, infection and the child will begin to have fever and all that. So if you are going to use TV ring, make sure that you are clean about it. You clean it from time to time. You can have more than one, buy several ones so that if one falls down, I don't think it's that expensive. You can pick another one and give to your child to soothe that, that child. So, but if you have other symptoms, please, it is, TV is not boiled. The child having boiled or having a redness of eye conjunctivitis, is not teething. If you have any such sign, take your child to the clinic immediately. So uh, we are still talking about tooth, de we are tooth decay now. We've talked about the etiology, what causes uh, tooth decay in, in, in children. So to avoid it, I've talked about the oral hygiene, maintaining good oral hygiene so that this, you don't have bacteria uh, in the mouth and black. You take off all the bacteria and uh, bacteria that, that can cause uh, tooth decay. And also the kind of food. Hmm. Some of us, uh, um... Dr. Buki. Sorry about that. Um, it seems to be. Uh, a technical glitch on Dr. Buki's side. Um, thank you for joining, Priscilla, all the way from Accra, Ghana. Thank you for joining. Good morning, Dr. Bemisola. Happy World Oral Health Day to you too, ma'am. 
Good morning, Faith. Thank you for joining. Good morning, ma'am. Please, you can start dropping your questions. So once Dr. Buki finishes, we can start taking questions. Good morning, Lavina. Thank you for joining. Ooh. Thank you for joining, Augustina from Accra, Ghana. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Jirma. Thank you for joining. Good morning to you. Good morning, Nora. Good morning, Oyekachi. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Good morning, Father Kemi. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining, Father Kemi. Thank you, Princess. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Good morning. Good morning. We greet you too, Princess. Although me, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Only Dr. Bacala is, is the doctor uh, on today's, today's um, ATP Live. She'll be joining us back shortly. Yes, thank God you caught the live broadcast. Thank God for that. Good morning, Grace. Thank you for joining. Sorry, we'll get back um, once once we fix the... Good morning, Comfort. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Dr. Dr. Buki? Yes? Are I'm you back. back with us? We can't see you yet. Yes. I don't know why, but... Oh, okay. I can hear you. Okay, all right. We can hear you too. We just cannot see you. Okay. Yes. I don't know why, but can you okay. Fix yeah, no. That? No, I can't fix it. It has to be fixed from your hand. Oh, wow. I wonder why. Thank you, Folua. Yes, thank you. Thank you for enjoying the live broadcast. Dr. Buki? Yes, I'm here. Okay, can you just continue talking? <laughs> we can hear you. Uh, wow, okay, so... Or do you still uh, have like something you need saying, to show us? We have several things to show, uh, so I don't know why this uh, is not showing. Let me see, I'm putting on the video and the mic. Okay, we'll, we'll just take it like that because um, okay, because of so, that time. Yes, ma. Yes, because of the time. So, uh, like I was saying, we stopped where we were talking about the teething ring and uh, we've talked about teething, well, what teething is and what teething is not. And yes. we're talking about uh, caring now. So, uh, I've said you that uh, we talked about the oral hygiene aspect when to start brushing your child's uh, uh, teeth, yes, when to start cleaning the mouth, the gums, and all that. So avoid um, avoid uh, <laughs> sugarated drinks. Can you hear me? Yes, ma. Okay. Avoid sugarated drinks and food as much as possible. A lot of moms, what happens is that they put uh, the drink uh, juice in the feeding bottles 
and leave the child with it to sleep and walk around. Mm. When you do that, you are allowing um, the mouth to be in a continuous state of uh, acidic state because those juices, the bacteria, everything work together to keep the mouth in a continuous acidic state, which we don't want. When the mouth is in an acidic state continuously, it encourages the breakdown of the teeth, thereby causing tooth decay. So you have to make sure that a child is not carrying the feeding bottle with drinks all through the day. There should be respite. If at all you are going to give a child the uh, juice, put it in a cup so that the child can drink it immediately. Encourage your children to actually feed from cups and not from the bottle. What should be in the bottle should be water and the formula. If you are giving milk formula, let that be in the bottle, but it should not be hanging around throughout the day. Also, um, when you are breastfeeding, a lot of people, this is very controversial. Yes, breastfeeding and at, at night, throughout the day is okay. But breastfeeding at night, you if you are going to breastfeed at night, you should be sure that you are able to clean your child's mouth after breastfeeding. Because at night, there's uh, the salivary flow is reduced. There's, uh, the food becomes stagnated in the mouth, the milk. And once that happens, it, it creates an area mm. and a venue for tooth decay to occur, especially once the child starts having growing in the teeth. The milk just settles down there. Saliva is not washing it away because the action of the saliva, what the saliva does is that it cleans, it helps to buffer and clean the mouth. But when we are sleeping, you know, that is not happening. That is why when we wake up in the morning, you can find that the mouth will smell because at night there's no buffering. When you're sleeping, buffering, the saliva uh, buffering action is not taking place. And also when you're breastfeeding or feeding your children at night, that's the same thing that happens. So if you are breastfeeding in the middle of the night, try and wipe your child's mouth with cloth, with the clean cloth and water before the baby goes back to sleep. Because this way you can prevent tooth decay in your child. In your child, okay. we have said so many things about transmission of you know saliva sharing activities of your of your you and your your child. Remember to floss. Remember to bring your child to the dentist twice. In a year, if you can't, if you don't remember, just bring them during all the long holiday period. Okay. Just okay. bring your children to the clinic once it is holiday time, long holiday period. Bring your child to to the clinic for for check, and um, also the amount of we talked about the amount of toothbrush, uh, the amount of toothpaste. And toothpaste to use. Thank you so much, Doctor Buki. We have some questions here. Uh, okay. I would like you to take. All right, um, our first question is from Augustina. Augustina is asking, she said, my baby is four months old. What can I use to clean my baby's mouth apart from handkerchief? Oh, Augustina, I, I guess you joined the broadcast late. Okay, Dr. Buki. Apart from handkerchief. Okay, so she said four months. Yes, four, four months. months old. Okay. People, I want to see the answers for those who have been on, uh, on the okay. platform if they will get it right for four people, months. People old, that have been have watching, since. no, we don't yes. have any price today. We don't have any price today. <laughs> Maybe we will give, send, give them a, a, a prize later. Okay, so anybody, okay. Dr. Buki is asking who can answer that question for Augustina yes. for those so that, that, that started the started, that started the live with us. Who wants to answer that question? My baby is four months old. What can I use to clean my baby's mouth apart from handkerchief? Anybody? People have been watching since the beginning. Oh, Dr. Dr. Buki talked about this. A four months old. What can be used to clean the baby's mouth? A ATP and zone for my hand now. Nah. Eh? <laughs> Four months old, four months old, four months old baby. Okay. What can you do? Okay. Um, we, we have some answers. We have some answers. Great. Uh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to show, I'm going to show the, the first answer said baby oral wipes. Um, second, um, that's from princess. Um, second person said a towel dedicated for the baby. Excellent. Great work. 
So, so we chew are into correct. eczema. Yes, chew into eczema. You are very correct. And um, also the baby oral wipe is correct because that may be expensive because you have to buy it off the counter. But oh, okay. for people who cannot afford that, just the clean towel, clean handkerchief, put in water to use and then use it to clean the child's tongue, use it to clean the child's mouth after feeding. That is just okay. You don't need to put any glycerin. You don't need to put any other thing just the clean cloth very good i can see another person putting something here yes so the clean water no you don't need any other thing just the clean handkerchief or white towel or towel and uh, with water okay augustine i hope i hope your question has been answered um our next question is from ijoma ijoma daniel is asking uh i oh, oh okay no she's not asking okay she's just she said i haven't been cleaning my baby's gum and tongue it will be ah. Okay, okay, she's asking. Sorry. Okay. I haven't been cleaning my baby's gum and tongue. It will be six months soon. How can I start? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, well, so it's not too late to start. It's not, Ijoma Daniel, thank you for that question. It's not too late to start cleaning your child's. Does your child have, have just, because by six months, we expect that the first tooth will have come grown in. As okay. the first tooth grown in, if the first tooth has grown in, I've talked about it, that you should use a good, uh, you should use the toothbrush. I showed it earlier on. If you go back and watch the video, use a child, appropriate uh, toothbrush for your child and use toothpaste, uh, the size of the a right grain side. of rice or spare to clean. So if your child doesn't have teeth yet, use that same cloth or towel with water and wipe your child's gums, tongue, palate, and buccal mucosa. That is okay. Okay. Thank All you. right. Okay. She, okay. She's saying a, a baby doesn't have tooth yet. So, Ijama, you you heard from the doctor. Even if the baby does not have tooth yet, you don't need to just just clean with the clean cloth and water. Um, the doctor. Reason, okay. Yes. Go, go ahead, man. Because you are trying to imbibe a good oral habit. So when it is time, the child is not saying, no, I don't want to open my mouth, I don't want to brush. That's what happens. When you have not developed the habit in your child to want to brush, the children, you can see that children really don't like brushing. On, if you see a child that loves brushing, it may be that the child is licking the toothpaste in one corner and, you know, putting everything. <laughs> so, but when, yes, but when you start the habit early, by just that simple uh, towel and water you're doing, it's not a waste of time. Yes, you will have the clean mouth, and also it will also help that child to know that it is time for us to clean the mouth, and you will not be stressed in future when you now start. You need to start brushing for your child. Okay, thank you, doctor. Um, our next question is from Princess Betem Asuko. My question on teeth is: My son is 13 months old but has only four teeth, two up and two down. He has milk allergies, so does not drink milk. Is that the reason he, does, he doesn't have teeth like his mates? What can I give him to make up for calcium and vitamin D? Can I use supplement? So if I get that question right, um, Madam Princess... He's 13 months old and has just four teeth. Your son is 13 months old with four teeth, okay? Two up, two down. He has milk allergy and does not drink milk. Is that the reason he doesn't have teeth like his mates? <laughs> no. Your son is perfectly fine. I'm the pediatric dentist and I'm telling you that your child is fine. At 13 months, your child has four teeth. That's fine. What we usually say as pediatric dentists is, if your child has not grown in any tooth by 13 months, then you need to come for investigation and for examination of your child's mouth. Mm -hmm. But your child is 13, so it's, always, it's, it's a range. Some children are slower, some children are running the race. Some you see, <laughs> we say that the first tooth should be by six months, but sometimes you have some children having the first tooth by, by, by four months. 
Some even are mm. born with the tooth. So it's quite mm. a range. But what we know is that once it is past 13 months and your child has not grown in one single tooth, then you should be worried. But now your child has 40. If your child is not taking milk, there are other sources of uh, protein. Maybe you can try some other ones like soya bean milk and other uh, form of milk that your child can, can tolerate so that your child can still be fine. So I'm sure that. Can I use supplements? Calcium? Yes, calcium, vitamin, or multivitamins are good for, for, for children, but you need to make sure that you check it out with your pediatrician before you can use any supplement, any drug at all that you want to put in your child's mouth. Make sure you clear it with your with your physician. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Our next question is from Ilori Fadekemi. How do one manage or correct a child's teeth that has changed color and has black and yellow particles? My baby is four years. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Madam Ilori, thank you for that question. So you have noticed that your child has black and yellow uh, particles or something in your child's teeth. So I want to ask, have you ever taken the child to the dentist? It's very important that you do so. Because now there are so many things that can cause black and yellow uh, called discoloration of the teeth. It could be tooth decay. I have not examined the child. And it could also be some stains, maybe mm. extreme six stains. When I say extreme six stains, that means there are stains that when we use our instruments for scaling and polishing, we can polish them and they will become white. But we also have some intrinsic stains that they are inside the tooth tissue. The, our, the, scaling, the instruments cannot remove them, no matter the brushing and all that. So you need to bring to the dentist. We have tooth colored materials that we can use to paint the, the teeth and they will look okay and white. So you need to visit the dentist so we can actually examine and know the cause of this tooth discoloration. Like I've told you, there are many cause of uh, yellow, black, orange, green stains. So until we see, visually examine, you can rule out tooth decay. If it is tooth decay, it can be treated. Even if it is the extrinsic stains, that is the one we can remove with our instruments can be treated. If there are stains that are in the tooth tissue as well, they can also be treated. So please visit the, the, the dent, dental clinic, pediatric dentist. So do, do not delay. For year old, some people believe that their milk teeth, they will end up falling out. These milk teeth are very important. God put them there for purpose. They are to guide the permanent ones in. If your child starts to get, uh, remove teeth too early, it takes away the self-esteem of the, of the child. Psychologically, too, it can affect. And those teeth are there for chewing. If your child cannot chew properly, will not take in the uh, adequate nutrition. And that can affect your child's, uh, your child's weight and nutritional status. So all these come together. So we want you to be proud of your baby's mouth. So please visit the pediatric dentist. Madame Thank you, Doctor. Um, Larry Farikemi, you've been told just visit the dentist and they will do proper evaluation. Um, okay, Ijoma is asking, are you in Lagos, ma'am? How can we visit you? Yes, I'm in Lagos and I work at the Lagos uh, University Teaching Hospital. So anytime you are coming, you can ask for me because you're a member of Axi Pediatrician. Even if you are not, you have access to come at any time. But if you ask for me, then I will see you and I will see your child. All right. Thank you, ma'am. So Dr. Bukiola Tosi is a consultant pediatric dentist at Luth Lagos University Chin Hospital. Okay. Nora is asking, my three-year-old son eats brushing. I have to beat every morning at before you brush, please, I want to know what I would do to make him brush without stress. Okay. So it's not too late, Madam Nora. Uh, that's why I said that two to three days after birth, that is when we should start cleaning our child's mouth so that they will not stress us. And then they can also have good uh, oral health. So right now, there are many ways in which you can, many magical ways in which you can make your child brush and make it interesting. You don't have to beat your child. 
You can look for toothbrush that has some music in it. We have those. If you go to some of the stores, you know, you have those toothbrushes that they sing. And once the child sees that, they become attracted to it. You can make it fun. You can, if you're on your laptop, you can download some oral health videos and cartoons showing that children, showing children who are brushing. Children love modeling. What I mean by modeling is that they are watching. They watch a lot. If you I mean, show another child that is brushing and is happy, they want to do it. that position. So you can also do that. And try to let the child also brush. Let them feel like they are independent. Of course, after that, you know that you are going to grab the... To do it. <laughs> you are going to do yours. So fun toothbrushes, fun uh, videos, and then um, fun things. Can you, can, you don't need to beat your child. If way you do that, you are causing more negative reaction. And you don't want that. So I hope I have answered your question. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um, um, Fadi Kevin says she will visit the dentist. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry. I, I jumped uh, a particular question. Uh, oh, okay. No. Princess, um, sorry. Dr. Buki has addressed that in in Nora's answer also. She says, I brush in the presence of my 13 months old, and now he struggles brush with me. I want to do it himself. Just let him be independent. Do it, then you to you, you will add your own after. Yes. <laughs> okay, and then she has a further question. She's the one that talked about milk allergy earlier. She says, my son has class one food allergy, wheat, milk, soy, sh shellfish, etc. Of recent, I added carrots to his oatmeal and it developed rashes on his face, neck, and arms. That's why I'm at a loss for what to use to supplement calcium, vitamin D, and proteins. Wow. Okay, this one, this one is more than um then the, the dental. Um you, you need you, you need to visit your pediatrician. Yes, so I would like you to visit your pediatrician or ask Dr. Bemi or put your question or ask the pediatrician for further... Um, yes, drop the question on the group. Oh, uh, Madam Princess, okay? Please just drop the question on the group. All right. Thank you. Okay, another another qu another question. We, we know people that are just, that are just joining our, our, our live. What type of brush can be used for a seven-month-old baby who has two teeth? Okay, so that we have mentioned that before. You're welcome, Madam Lawal. Uh, you said what type of brush can be used. I wish my video is uh, on. I don't know what is going on, but if you go back and watch from the beginning, I showed some toothbrushes that you can use. Very beautiful ones, very innovative. You can, uh, that have, you can use for seven-month-old. So if you if you have time, you go back again from the beginning and you will see the picture of, of the toothbrush that I've put there. We have some finger toothbrushes. We have those that are age appropriate because when you have a seven month old, you need something small, not too big. And you don't want something that will also traumatize or injure your child's uh, gums and mouth. So you need soft toothbrush. First, the toothbrush must, must be soft. You don't need hard toothbrush. Anything that soft toothbrush cannot remove, you need to visit the dentist. So that we can use our instruments to do what we call scaling and polishing. Once you have, to, you if you use hard toothbrush, it can wear away the gums. It can cause more injuries. So soft to medium toothbrush is what we, we recommend. And the toothbrush should be changed every three months. Or once the bristles start to to to, to shout, I don't know what. <laughs> it has to start to spread. <laughs> or to spread, you need to change. And once you have, um, let me mention that a lot of people don't know, if you have sore throat, please change your toothbrush after because you don't want to infect yourself. Once oh. you have sore throat, change your toothbrush, buy a new. Once the sore throat is gone, change your toothbrush and have, uh, get a new. new. Right. Okay, sorry. Dr. Wookie, okay, sorry. Yes. When, when the sore throat starts, we change the toothbrush and when it's, when it's gone, we change it again, right? No, I'm saying that if you have an episode of uh, 
sore throat now. Sore throat. And when it's gone, you change that toothbrush and get. Oh, okay. Because okay. You don't okay. want to lose yourself when you're brushing. A lot of bacteria and all that, you know, stays on the brush. So on the brush. Okay. And get a new one. All right. Thank you, ma. Uh, okay, yes, thank you. Put put your question on the group. Thank you. Um, Ijema, where can I watch this video again? Okay, because it's currently live, um, you can't watch it from the beginning yet until we end it. It should end in a few minutes. Once it ends, you can watch it again. It's going to be, it's it's currently live on the Ask the Pediatricians Foundation page, so you can go back and watch it. Um, you can also watch it on wherever it has been shared so it's been shared to the ask politicians um group um, um ask the physicians family group you can watch it again even on the on 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 the watch party just wait until we finish once it's finished then you can watch all over again thank you um okay um Ms. Lawa, you're welcome okay there's a question here from Adiola Uka. My son eats his face, mouth on the fridge door. And since four days to date, he's been complaining of sensitivity on a particular tooth. Saying, mommy, my teeth is shocking me. Okay, Madam Adiola, thank you for your question. How old is your son? Oh, yeah. Madam Adela Uka, how old is your son, please? So when we ask questions, it's always good to put the age. Age. Your child. Very important in ask the pediatrician for children because it helps us to know the uh, developmental uh, status of your child. And then, so I want to know whether they are the permanent or the, the baby teeth. Anyway, whether they are the baby teeth or permanent teeth, it's important that because we didn't get to talk about trauma that's another area that we need to know about if there's any trauma to the to the teeth okay is is 5 years old okay so you have to check the child anytime a child complains or hits the mouth or teeth against anything or falls down it's important that we go to the dental clinic immediately if you can't go that day you go the following day but it's best that you go immediately because some immediate emergency treatment can save uh they can help with the prognosis that is can save the, the baby teeth and the permanent ones because if you do not take some actions immediately it can affect the permanent the permanent teeth and the, uh, if it is the baby tooth as well it can also affect the baby tooth and affect the one that has not um, erupted so the child that is complaining of uh, sensitivity you need to take him to see the the dentist because if there's a fracture i don't know now maybe some of part of the tooth has been chipped off if that's mm. been chipped off definitely the child will have some sensitivity because the dentin which is meant to be covered by the enamel may have been exposed and therefore uh causing your child to have uh, sensitivity so it's always best especially for trauma we can go on and on but we are needed to talk about uh, if the tooth falls off completely out of the socket we know it can be put back we have talked about that before that if a tooth especially a permanent tooth falls off from the socket completely that's not the end of the world in fact what you need to do if you have the scene take pick that tooth up from the crown not the root the crown, where the one, the one that shows in the mouth, the part of the tooth that shows. In the okay, mouth. the one that we can see. Okay. Yes, the one we can see. That is the crown. Pick it up from the crown, by the crown. Rinse it gently. Don't scrub it under a running water, and then put it in a cup of milk, evaporated milk, and rush that child to the dental clinic immediately. What do we do okay. when we see such children? We take it out of that milk. We clean it and we put it back in the socket and put some wires to stabilize it. And then after two, one to two weeks, we remove the wire and the, the teeth or tooth is back. Wow. So a lot of people don't know this. Once they there's a tooth falls off, what they do is that they don't even bother looking for it. And if they find it, 
they wrap it in a dry, maybe in a cotton wool or handkerchief or paper. When you do that, you are killing the tooth because the tooth is a living, is a living organ because mm. it contains nerves, it contains blood vessels. You want to try and maintain it in that state as much as possible before you get to the dental clinic. So when you put it in milk, it, it has, studies have shown that it helps to preserve the nerves and the, 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 blood, uh, the blood vessels at the wow. pulp, which is the, if I can explain it, it is the pulp. It helps to preserve the pulp as much as possible so that when we implant it, it stays there and the prognosis is good for years. We have done this and we are still doing it. So that okay. is why if you attempt such, you are able to. Um, Dr. Buki, so yes. does that apply to only permanent teeth or even milk teeth also? So for milk teeth, if it falls off completely, we don't put milk uh, teeth back. Teeth back, okay. Because, yeah, we don't want anything or infection to go and affect the permanent The permanent, the permanent teeth, teeth that is there. Oh, but okay, okay. Is, is, uh, is, it has gone in. What we usually do is watch it because children are wonderful. God has made the tooth can <laughs> erupt back into the, the mouth. So sometimes we have what we call intrusion. The tooth can either go in back into go the in. socket or fall completely out of the socket. So, but what is important is that quick time. Time is a very important factor when there's trauma. You never know because you as a uh, as a caregiver may not know what to do but once you bring that child immediately to the to the clinic then you can save the tooth okay, okay. or give you the appropriate treatment at that time but if a tooth right. falls off completely when it's baby tooth or just save it because you may not know whether it is the baby tooth or it is the permanent some mothers don't mm. know whether it is baby or permanent mm. so yes. if you see any to put in the in the cup of milk and bring it straight to the clinic. Then we can tell you, oh, this is the baby too. This is the permanent to permanent give the treatment. All right, thank you so much, Ma. Uh, okay, um, how often should we? She has mentioned this every three months or when the bristles begin to open their teeth also. <laughs> okay, um, we, are, we, are, we are gradually running out of time. What can cause a child of three years to be opening his mouth every time? Uh, did this just that? Um, Dr. Buki, do you want to answer okay. that? So she should, yes, ma'am. So what can cause a child of three years to be opening the mouth every time? So it can be just a habit that the child has developed. There are different oral habits. Some people just... You know, put their hand in their mouth. Some children leave their mouth open, and uh, it may be that your child may be a mouth breather, trying to breathe in through the mouth. So you need to check that. Bring your child to the clinic. Let us examine the child. Some children are they just breathe in through their mouth. We call them mouth breathers. They breathe with their mouth instead of breathing with their nose. Nose. So it may be a mouth breather. So. You have to still bring your child for proper exam, for proper examination. So that okay. Out. All right. Thank you, Ma. Um, Augustina, please, you need to watch the live from the beginning again. Once, once we, once we finish, watch the video all over again. When the baby starts sitting, what are the signs and symptoms? Do I need to check out for? Ready? Where um, Doctor Buki already told us what to look out for. Drooling slight increase in temperature not fever so they maybe maybe the baby will be fussing also crying but when you begin to see diarrhea no uh vomiting no rashes no so and you can also go to the website there, there's 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 a write-up there on on the signs to look out for in titan but please when we finish this live watch the video all over again okay um doctor princess is asking the milk that we throw in the old tooth should it be cold or room temperature so the milk should just be in room temperature not cold milk room, room temperature, temperature. okay don't right. have access to 
milk and you have access to normal saline. I think you, most people will have access to milk before normal saline. Yeah, normal milk saline is more common. Pharmacy or in the hospital. So that's why yeah. I mentioned milk. milk. Use milk and or you can tell the child to spit the saliva into the cup. Most of the time the children are not able to do so, but you can get them to spit their own saliva in the cup and put the tooth in that saliva. But that's, that's very good. Because that's Ooh. a normal environment. Okay, for the tooth. Oh, okay. Yes. They can get the saliva, but if somebody that is injured and you know is under, <laughs> no. they not able to do that. So okay. that's why I say milk. Don't waste time at all. Put it in liquid milk and rush the child to the dental. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you to yes, ATPs are the best. ATP is the best. Our members also are the best. Thank you very much. Um, how do I know the permanent or milk teeth? Well, she already said it. In case you cannot identify it, just take it to the dentist. They will tell you which one it is. Um, okay, Miss Blessing, I don't know what you're trying to say. Okay. Um, Fari Kim is asking again, how do one help a child that is bringing out the molar tooth? After visiting the dentist to reduce the pain. Okay, so your question is: uh, Your child is bringing out the molar. How old is this child? We have the primary molars and we have the permanent molars. So, um, hmm. I, I always like to have age. Have the age. Um, Ilari Farikami, what's the age of this child that you're asking about? Are you still there? So what um, Ilori is saying is that the child has pain. Yes. So I'm assuming that the child is uh, erupting the baby, the baby teeth, which is still teething. OK. So she said he is four years old. Four years and he's you know, bringing out the molar. So what uh, to reduce pain? You know, it's still part of teething. The child will be irritable, will be crying. If there's an increase in temperature, you give paracetamol. But you still need to visit the dentist because when you are talking about pain, I need to know that it is not due to tooth decay. Or uh, she said like after that. visiting the dentist, so maybe like at home, what, what can they do else? So if you visit the dentist, the dentist, of course, will give you, depending on what is seen at that time, if there's mm. anything that is causing pain, of course, we will treat the pain by giving you some analgesics. If it is there's infection, we will treat the infection by giving you some antibiotics or maybe if the tooth needs to be taken out, if it is tooth decay. So, but if it is as a result of uh, teething, definitely we have said that paracetamol, we will give paracetamol analgesic to relieve the pain. That should have been given to you or prescribed to you by the dentist. And I talked about teething rings as well. They help to soothe the child. You put the teething ring in the uh, in the fridge, it cools the, because it's a lot of irritation. The gums are irrit irritable at that time. So they need something to soothe it. So that is all. You don't need any other thing apart from the analgesic. If there's still pain, then you need to come and we we'll, we'll check what is really going on. Oh, no. that. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. Um, I think that's the last question we have right now. Um, it's it's been a beautiful one hour discussing today on the World Oral Health Day. Let's be proud of our mouth. Let's be proud of our mouth. Let your children be proud of their own mouth also. Um. Okay, yes, um, Ilari said they've been giving paracetamol. Okay, so please, for those that were asking, where can they watch it after we end the broadcast? You can watch on Facebook, you can watch on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is ATP TV, T V E E. Um, you can see it on the banner under our names, um, our Facebook group name, Twitter, Instagram. Then the YouTube channel link. 
YouTube slash C slash ATP TVE. -E. So please, please, please watch the live, um, watch the video. It, it, it will no longer be live once we end it. Watch the video from the beginning and listen to everything that Dr. Buki has shared with us. Let's, let's um, inculcate good oral habits for ourselves, for our children. She also talked about pregnant women. Oral hygiene for our babies start from when we're in, well, well, for, from the womb. So let's inculcate all this. Okay, um, just let's take this final question. This question just, uh, okay. Well, Dr. Buki already addressed this earlier, but I'll just take this final question. My son of 22 months struggles every time he wants to brush. We've tried everything possible, doesn't work. Please, what can I do? Because the teeth is getting discolored. So thank you, Madam Adele. Yeah, we have talked about this. I will just say it again that um, starting the uh, oral hygiene should start uh, two to three days as soon as the child is born. The reason for this is to start the habit, to start to, you know, the habit of uh, to cleaning the mouth and brushing starts a few days after the child is born so that they do not give us stress. They know that it is time to start to clean the mouth. And uh, like I answered uh, one of the uh, parents, ATP parents earlier, that there are many fun ways in which you can make a child want to brush. Like I said, you can get two brushes that have music that can sing. It's fascinating uh, to fascinate them and want them to you know, want to brush. And then also, you can also download some, um, some cartoons and oral health um, videos where children are brushing their, their, their mouth. And uh, you know, like I said, that children love to, to watch others. They watch us, they watch other people and they can learn from what is going on in their environment. And once they see that such children are brushing their teeth, they are not crying, they are having fun, they too want to practice it. <laughs> Okay. So also, you can also give the brush to the child with the appropriate amount of toothpaste. We've talked about that. Allow them to feel like they're in control. And once they are done, you now take control and also do that which you want to do. So gradually, the child will accept it. It's not too late. 22 months is very good time to want to start, you know, the child. Get interesting toothbrush. Get toothbrushes that have cartoon, toothbrushes that can sing and, you know, let them, those that can even make jingles. There are all sorts and that can help. And this discoloration, you also need to bring your child to see the dentist so that we, are, we know that the discoloration is actually from the poor oral hygiene and it's not from something else. Yeah, so, okay. Thank you so much, Doctor. Um, Adela Yamutrai, I hope your question has been at, at, answered. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Father Kemi. Yes, long live ATP. God bless Nigeria. Thank you so much. Um, once again, ATP Live. Thank you, Dr. Bukiola to say thank you for, for sharing with us today. Thank you, everybody that joined. You can watch the video after it has ended on the foundation page, on the Facebook group, on our YouTube channel. Um, until the next time we come across you for Ask Presentations Live. Don't forget the exact restrictions live on Instagram on Monday by 6 p.m. Um, thank you so much and have a lovely day. Any other question, please drop them on the group. We have moderators and professionals that will attend to your questions. Please don't drop any other question on this video. Thank you so much and have a beautiful Saturday. Bye. Thank you. Be proud of your mouth. Yes, we're proud of your mouth. Thank you.